This is the same car, a 1990 GTU with 5-speed manual transmission that I have a compression test video on from many years ago demonstrating to my sorrow what a compression test looks like when an apex seal has failed. I ended up putting a new engine in it. Well, I didn't do it. That's beyond my skill set. And at the time, it was my daily driver, and I needed it back on the road as quickly as possible. It was painful to spend the money, but my alternative was to have something that was worth nothing. I should note that I didn't buy the car new. I bought it in September of 1999, with 77,000 miles on it, and the engine failed in August of 2001 at the 106,000 mile point. The replacement engine was new, an actual new, not rebuilt engine from Mazda. Upon the advice of the folks who did the engine swap, I now put four ounces of two-stroke oil into the gas tank with each fill-up. They claimed at the time it would make a repeat of the apex seal failure very unlikely. So far, that's true. Never expected to keep it that long, but I still like the car, so why not? Here's a quick shot of the dash with the bracket that I 3D printed that would hold my phone in place to do the recording. It's a little jittery, but it was the best I could think to do. A separate camera is looking out the front window for the drive. I've long since retired the car from daily driver status, inspired by getting a job that had 45 traffic lights each way, the wear and tear on the clutch and on my left leg was too much to endure, so I got a car with an automatic and designated the RX-7 as my weekend toy. So the car is turning 200,000 miles, but the engine only has about 94,000 miles on it. The rest of the car, though, transmission, differential, everything in the front end, even the exhaust system, is still original. There are maintenance, of course, a couple of alternators, a couple of batteries, and probably not a coincidence. A couple of clutch master cylinders and one clutch slave cylinder. Uh, just recently, I did the brake master cylinder. Also, at about 175,000 miles, the original drive shaft had a failing U-joint. So I replaced it with one that had uh, grease fittings. The original drive shafts lack those. And that failed after 25,000 miles, so I just replaced the drive shaft again with one that has no grease fittings. Maybe I wasn't diligent enough in lubricating the first replacement, but 25,000 seems like a premature failure to me. I've also done an R12 to R134 conversion after the AC compressor failed on me. The compressor itself was fine, but the magnetic clutch shorted blowing fuses and it was easier just to replace the whole compressor and do the R134 conversion. Much to my surprise, the AC works just as well as it did with R12. And then we just turned 200,000. There were some bolts and bushings that turned to mush in the shift linkage. So I replaced parts as necessary to get it shifting well again. Other than that, it's just been routine maintenance. I've just put a set of tires on the car. And when I say I've put a set on, I mean that I got one of those manual tire changers from Harbor Freight and did the job myself with tires from Tire Rack. And no, this is not a paid endorsement. I, I just didn't want the usual Tires R Us guys to be driving the car, especially given the way that rotaries behave when you don't let them warm up completely. Often they become rather challenging to start. I did that once, a quick run just to move the car on the driveway. I knew better, but I thought I could get away with it. No, I didn't. Fortunately, I managed to get it started after the foot to the floor fuel pump fuse removed procedure. So here's the first 200,000 miles. A 31, well, essentially 32-year-old car. I don't remember the last time I saw another one on the road. But as long as they keep selling gasoline, Lord willing, this one will be one. 